water, temperature and salinity of ocean waters. Did you ever wonder why the oceans are filled with salt water instead of fresh water? Where did all this salt in the ocean come from? And what salt is this? Is it the same salt you find on a dining room table? Salt in the ocean comes from rocks on land. As water flows in rivers, it picks up small amounts of mineral salts from the rocks and soil of the riverbeds. This water keeps flowing ahead and then it flows into the oceans and seas. This water has very little salt, so river water is still considered fresh water. But many such rivers flow into the sea, so the sea collects a lot of salt over time. Can you see the rivers flowing into the sea in this satellite image? Some seawater evaporates, but the salt gets left behind. This also keeps happening over the years. The salt stays in the ocean as it cannot evaporate. As this goes on, the remaining water keeps getting a little more saltier as time passes. And the salt that is present in the highest amount is sodium chloride, the same salt that we use in our food. There are other salts too, but mainly the salty taste of seawater is due to sodium chloride. Saltiness of the water is known as its salinity. If a lot of water evaporates, then the saltiness is more. So, if the rate of evaporation is high, then the salinity is high. When temperature is high, the rate of evaporation is high. So, where temperature is high, then salinity is high. The rain that falls onto the earth also falls on the oceans. Rainwater is fresh water. It is not saline water. As fresh water gets added to the oceans, the saltiness of the oceans reduces. If the rainfall is high in a region, the salinity of the ocean water will be low in that region. Rivers bring salts from land into the sea, but the proportion of salts in the river water is very low. So, when more rivers join the sea, the saltiness of the sea water reduces. So, if the supply of fresh water through rivers is high in a region, the salinity of the ocean water will be low in that region. Icebergs and glaciers that melt also add fresh water to the sea. The polar ice that melts also increases the fresh water supply and reduces the saltiness of water. So, if the supply of fresh water through melting ice is high in a region, the salinity of the ocean water will be low in that region. So, what are the factors that affect salinity of the oceans? Temperature. If that is high, salinity is high. Evaporation. If that is high, salinity is high. Rainfall. If that is high, salinity is low. River inflow. If that is high, salinity is low. Melting ice. If that is high, salinity is low. We say salinity increases or decreases. That means we should have a way of measuring it. Salinity is measured as the salt present in 1000 grams of water. If 1000 grams of water has 35 grams of salt, the salinity is said to be 35 parts per thousand. This is written as 35 parts per thousand. So, salinity of 35 grams per thousand grams of water is written as like this. Look at the sign. It's not just a percentage sign. There is one more circle after it. 
Percent means per hundred. Since this is per thousand, we add the extra zero. So percent becomes per thousand. Take a look at the salinity of oceans and seas across the world. Atlantic Ocean, thirty-six to thirty-seven per thousand. Pacific Ocean, thirty-four to thirty-seven per thousand. Mediterranean Sea, thirty-eight per thousand. Indian Ocean, thirty-two to thirty-seven per thousand. The average salinity of sea water is thirty-five per thousand. Lines joining places with equal salinity are called isohaline. The sun shines brightly on the Red Sea throughout the year. There is not much rainfall there, and not too many rivers flow into it. So the salinity of the Red Sea is high. It's about forty-one per thousand. That's more than the average ocean salinity, which is thirty-five per thousand. The Baltic Sea is closer to the North Pole. Some rivers dump water into it. And it receives moderate rainfall. So salinity of the Baltic Sea is low. It is about seven per thousand. You know that the average is thirty-five per thousand. This is where the Dead Sea is. It is very hot there throughout the year, and hardly any rivers empty into it. So the salinity of the Dead Sea is very high. It's about. Three hundred and thirty-two per thousand. So the water is very heavy. It's impossible to sink in the Dead Sea. Think and discuss. How does evaporation affect the salinity of ocean water? How does fresh water affect the salinity of ocean water? How is salinity measured? What is the significance of the extra zero? Another property of the ocean water that keeps changing from place to place is its temperature. Why does this happen? Does this have any impact on other things? Let's find out. You have already studied the different methods of transfer of heat. The earth receives its heat from the sun and the sun warms up the top layer of water. As the top layer of water heats up, it expands and becomes light, so it stays at the top. In this way, only the top few layers of water, where sunlight can penetrate through, warm up. The rest of the deep water remains cool. Well, then when we heat up a pot of water on the stove, how come the whole water warms up? Ah. Good question, isn't it? Think, think. What's different in these two situations? The sun heating the ocean water and you boiling a pot on the stove. Ah, in a pot, we are heating water from the bottom, so the bottom layer of water becomes warm and expands and rises. Then the layer on top, which is cooler, comes down. And takes its place. Then that warms up and moves up. So a convection current gets set up, and all of the water heats up. When the sun is heating the ocean water, it's heating the top. So the lighter water remains at the top. It's not flowing out anywhere. So we know that the sun's heat only warms up the top layer of the ocean water. Deep water is always cool. How much heat each area of the Earth receives depends on its distance from the equator. This is because the rays of the sun start slanting more and more as we move towards the poles. So as we go towards the poles, the amount of heat received by the Earth goes on decreasing. So the sun heats up the water in the equatorial oceans more than the water in the oceans near the poles. However, all this is just the top layer of water. 
as we go deeper and deeper in the ocean the water is all cold anyway on this map you can see how the surface water temperature decreases as we go towards the poles the arctic ocean is so cold that most of it is frozen all the time we call this ice the polar ice cap as ice is lighter than water it floats on water you know this so even ice in the ocean floats on top of the water now look at a very interesting and marvelous thing that happens because of this remember that ice is lighter than water and floats on top of the water also understand that ice is a bad conductor of heat now let's see what happens ice is formed at 0 degree celsius so it gets formed when the temperature of water becomes 0 degree celsius as some water changes to ice the ice floats and forms a layer on the top of the water all the water is still above freezing temperature once the ice floats on top it stops the water from becoming colder as it is a bad conductor of heat so the rest of the water below the ice stays above freezing temperature and remains liquid that is the reason that life in the water can remain alive throughout the winter think and discuss how does ice protect the marine life in polar regions